The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. Good afternoon and welcome to Generations Radio. I am Percy Yohara, your host here every Saturday and Sunday afternoon. So welcome to back to the show. And if you're new to the show, we're here every weekend. And you can listen to us live on iHeartRadio or you can go to our website, generations808.com and click on the live button. So thank you for joining us. And as you guys know that we archive all these past shows. Um, so if you missed a show or if you want to look at a specific topic, go to our website, generations808.com. And you'll click, you'll have the title of every show for the last, I think, six to seven months. So, anyway, welcome back to the show, Mr. Michael Yee here. We are a certified financial planner and uh, one of our writers and business partners in Generations Magazine. So, thank you, Michael, for taking the time out. I know you're super busy. So, thank you for coming down. Pleasure to be here again, Percy. And likewise, I'm glad you always you always bring some great guests. And I've met this guest before, I've heard him speak many times, and uh, he's a really great besides a great guy, an expert on long-term care insurance and insurance and specifically, but welcome to the show with Mr. Jo Tony Jamato. Thank you, Percy, glad to be here. And you're flying in from, you came in from California. That's right, Northern California, San Francisco. Oh, well, actually I'm gonna be there because uh, next month, because I'm, I became a big Oakland, um, well, Golden State Warrior fan. All right. So my birthday's in January, I try to get out there. So I fell in love with Steph Curry and what an amazing basketball player. Not not to change the subject, but <laughs> a big fan. But anyway, yeah. um, welcome to the show. And he's got an Aloha shirt on, guys. And I know you guys can't see him, but uh, and I've got the same Aloha shirt, just I'm glad I didn't wear it today. So mm -hmm. getting to be more of a Kama'aina now. <clears throat> We have excellent taste, Percy, is what I can say. <laughs> anyway, uh, Michael and Tony here is going to be talking about, you know, one of the big issues in Hawaii, and you're going to see it more and more next year in 2016. In fact, you're going to see a bill come up about this, is about how to finance long-term care. And uh, Tony, uh, Tony and Michael from Ameriprise Financial, and one thing great about Ameriprise Financial that I love about them is that uh, they do what's called holistic planning. They're planning from today to today you pass on. And they do talk about the whole picture. And you know, long-term care has is, is got to be part of that conversation when you're dealing with, with your financial advisor or your state planning attorney. Really take a hard look at that because long-term care, I've been saying this probably about 10, 11 years now that long-term care is going to be our biggest social and biggest financial crisis we're going to face this century and i know homelessness is a big deal but you know there's only about 58 homelessness pe homeless people in hawaii i know that number is going to go up but amount of people p being caregivers in hawaii is michael as you know is is over what two hundred thousand people huh? right and it's a big big issue and it's going to get worse as all our baby boomers parents start to age and need long-term care so michael give us a little bit of background on yourself first of all um, I've been in the industry uh, more than 30 years now, and uh, my primary focus is helping people solve longevity and planning for long-term care, uh, helping them plan their entire lives through the phases that they go through, from the independent phase to diminished capacity, incapacity, and end of life. And Tony, you've been in Ameriprise for many years as well, right? That's, that's correct. I started my career as an attorney uh, practice law for 10 years uh, before joining Ameriprise to work in their advanced planning department. Uh, did that for about 15 years and for the past five years I've been the regional vice president for their insurance division, River Source. And uh, so, you, but you've been in Hawaii, so you come here several times a year, huh? That I do. I come here about six times per wow. year. And great. Uh, it I, is it is a great uh, yeah. position to have. Yeah, and if, if if you ever want to listen to Tony speak in person, I know Mr. Yee here um, and your whole Kelly uh, group that does workshops every almost every month. Yeah, yeah, maybe we do two workshops a month, uh, scheduled throughout the year, various topics, and and yes, uh, Naho Kelly is a team, so we have. A, uh, a group of trained advisors doing the same thing we do, which uh, Percy coined financial gerontology. 
Yeah, I've been using that for a while actually, and it's really taking place now. And I'm glad you 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 understand it. I mean, you, we've known each other for years, but you're one of the few advisors that really really gets this and uh, and I'm trying to get more advisors to understand that we have to plan to, to reach the peak on life is retirement but we also have to plan coming down the coming down the mountain and that's long-term care so I appreciate what you've been teaching me and, and educating me so in Hawaii Michael what do you see about in, in terms of the amount of caregivers the amount of issues facing long-term care in Hawaii for our local residents uh, it, it's an incredible thing in 2011 they did a study on long-term care in Hawaii and uh, we have, first of all, the highest longevity in the country. We have uh, where one in five people in our population is a senior. And by 2030, it's one in four. And this longevity was, is a two-edged sword. What's coming with that is a rise in uh, caregiving. So we find we have the fastest growing multi-generational family situation where children taking care of elderly parents, including myself and, and, and many other people. So I, I identify with the population of we having to take care of our kapuna. Yeah, and it, Tony, you may not know this, but the, 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 the county of Honolulu passed a new bill and we're seeing this. In fact, I was reading an article yesterday about this. More and more states are passing what's called the ADU bill. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, accessory dwelling unit for like a mother-in-law unit. Mm -hmm. And Hawaii just passed it recently. And now you're seeing ads and articles about, you know, maybe you should hire me as a contractor to build an accessory unit because you're gonna see more and more of that. I mean, Hawaii leads the country per capita, uh, how many people live in a home, how many live with their parents. And it, it's growing and it's gonna get worse, I think. So anyway, so in terms of long-term care, how do you position long-term care insurance? So how do you position that talk? Can I ask you that? When you're dealing with families or your clients, whether they're 30 or 70 years old, how do you position that? Because I was talking to somebody this morning before I came, by the way, and you're talking about long-term care insurance, and it's, hey, it was so expensive. I said, yeah, it's, it's that's the cost of care, but do you want to pay cents on a dollar or a dollar for dollar, right? Right, right. Uh, I always say that um, insurance is just a means to pay for care so that you can take the burden off of the family and you can have care the way you want it and where you want it, right? And uh, most people concerned about uh, their family are worried about um, their retirement, the stability of their retirement. They worried about uh, legacy they intended for their children. And uh, most people go through life and, and solve those two areas, but they never think about the plan for long-term care and it can disrupt or blow it up and absolutely uh, that's my main concern is that today uh, we, we we haven't done a good job figuring out uh how to solve for longevity which means that where people used to have a retirement that was 15 years now we have 30 years right uh, i just went to a funeral last month my client 101 years old so wow. in hawaii I have a ton of clients in their 90s and their 80s, we're way past the national average. And, and so that, that is why I say long-term care is a family event. It's not just the aging parent that will need care someday. Uh, it involves the family. And when it does, there's physical, uh, it's physical, emotional, relational, and financial. Yeah. As we live longer, guys, you know, like, like I talked about my father, my father's been retired longer than he actually worked. And that's hard to believe. I mean, maybe an hour when I wear baby boomers, maybe that's not going to be true. But, you know, he, re he retired, I believe, at 53 or 54. Uh, I play softball with many people my age. I'm 55. And I play with probably with seven of them that retired at 52. <laughs> I mean, it's Incredible. just amazing. They could do that back then. Plus, yeah. when they started working in the, in, the, in, the, in the late 70s, early 80s, they all had pension. They mm -hmm. stayed at one place. Today, we, we move around. So, Tony, yeah. you see long-term care from a national level, let alone a Hawaii. What are the chances of somebody needing long-term care? Well, some statistics compiled by the Department of Health and Human uh, Resources has stated that about 70% of the adult population will require some sort of extended care before they expire. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether that is uh, home health aid, 
uh, adult daycare, assisted living, or perhaps skilled nursing care. So uh, a significant portion of the population is likely to need that and probably not uh, skilled nursing care for the majority of that time. They'll probably need more of the uh, lower end of services, home health aid services, perhaps assisted living. Yeah. Unfortunately, gang, we already have a shortage of caregivers. We have several home home care companies in our magazine, Generations Magazine, and I and I know all the owners and all of them tell me the same thing. The biggest problem they're facing is finding workers, finding people that want to be caregivers. So it, it's a growing issue. And, I, and you know, we're, we're touching the surface, you know, right now as, as we age in here in 2015. What do you think is going to happen in 2020, 2025? You know, I'll be 80 in 2040. I mean, that's a long way to think about it, but it's really something that, Michael, maybe you can ask us. People don't really think about long-term care much, right? They're, they worry about the college, taking care of their kids in college or their grandkids, or, you know, worry about the rail coming in and what's, whether I'm going to use it or the taxes I'm going to pay on that. I mean, there's so many other issues that, that people put ahead of long-term care. It's because they're focusing on what's right in front of them, yeah. right? So, so they're not thinking that uh, we don't know how and when, but when it comes, you're either going to be ready for the crisis or you're not. And, and uh, long-term care takes advanced planning, and if you plan, you can solve it. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tony, for, for having the chance of 70% that you're going to need some form of care, I mean, you know, you know what to figure off the top of your head with the, with the percentage of... Uh, of somebody house burning down it's very low very it's low. very <laughs> low I, I don't know the number off the top yeah, of my head I, but I, I know I, it's I like even in northern california where they have had a significant number of fires mm -hmm. uh when you think of the total number of homes in northern california and the percent that burns down it's very slim yeah it's like one in out of 100 150 000, and getting a car accident maybe one in twenty thousand. And when you talk about long-term care, it's 70%. I mean, that's hard. It's hard to fathom why people don't plan that out. And they don't see it uh, that uh, if the parent doesn't plan it out, it's when it comes, it's going to involve the family. And the family doesn't see it that when it happens to the parent, it's going to involve the family. And, and for some people going through long-term care, like in the articles you've done before and all the people we talked about, some people, it can bring the family together, but for a lot of people, the stress that it causes can break families up. Yeah, I was actually at a cocktail party last night talking to the girl, she's about 31 years old, and she's kind of telling me, yeah, you know, she found out what I do in the magazine. I said, well, you're kind of young, but you know, your parents are probably, you know, little, little about same age as me, but your grandparents are still alive, and he goes, and do you care, or do you worry about them at all? He goes, oh, absolutely because I live here and they live in the mainland. So Tony, maybe we can, we can back up exactly what long-term care is. And you mentioned different things about home health aid and, and adult day centers. What exactly is long-term care? Because I think this girl was at 31, just cannot, she couldn't think, really didn't understand long-term care. And even when I got in this business at what, 11, 12 years ago, you know, I never thought about what long-term care is. And so sure. can you again, break it down? Um, you know, when people think about uh, long-term care, extended care, it really is broken in three component parts. Uh, one would be uh, acute, uh, an acute illness. That would be something like a broken hip or a heart attack or maybe even the flu. Uh, in, in that situation, uh, maybe someone needs some sort of assistance from another individual to take care of themselves. But uh, long-term care, extended care that most people focus on is when an individual is unable to perform two of the six activities of daily living. Uh, they would qualify for most benefits under a hybrid life insurance long-term care contract or a pure long-term care contract. And those activities uh, coincide with what you do on a regular basis. You yeah, know, they're very think. well known. ADLs, as they say, right? So exactly. Six ADLs. And I always get confused about <laughs> six. Can you break it down for me again, please? Sure, sure. Uh, Percy, the way I think of it is just what I do on a, a daily basis. You know, the, the first thing I do after waking up is transfer myself out of the bed. So Good one. Uh, if you cannot uh, transfer yourself in and out of a chair or in and out of your bed, without assistance, then you can't perform one of those ADLs. 
Uh, the next thing I do is I run into the bathroom or restroom and void. So if you need assistance uh, toileting, uh, that would be the second activity of daily living. And if you can't perform that without uh, the substantial assistance of another individual, uh, then that would be a second uh, that's a good activity. Way to, that's a good way to break it down, Tony. Now I, I'm going to remember this one. With, All right. What exactly do you do when you get out? All right. And next. Just follow the path. <laughs> yeah, next, exactly. Next, you know, I, I jump into the shower. I okay. Mean, uh, so if you need assistance bathing, uh, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, uh, shaving, uh, if you need assistance in that regard, then you can't perform another one of the activities of daily That's living. Three. Number four, uh, after after drying off out of after the shower or bath, then you dress. Uh, and if you need assistance, uh, zipping your clothes, tying your shoes, buttoning buttons, mm, okay. uh, then you you could not perform uh, one of the activities of daily living. That's four. Uh, and then my mother said, after I had uh, bathed and dressed, only then could I come downstairs and have breakfast. Ah. <laughs> so if you need uh, assistance eating, you know, ladling soup, cutting your meat, uh, mm. then then you can't perform uh, the fifth activity of daily living. And that, that doesn't include preparing food. You know, you, you can have someone prepare the food for you, but if you can't feed it to yourself, then you can't perform uh, one of the activities of daily living. And then lastly, you have to be able to maintain continence uh, throughout the, uh, the day. Uh, as well as the evening. Hold it uh, in. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, th that's the physical component to, to determine whether someone would be eligible for uh, extended care. But there's also what I call the trump card, and that is cognitive impairment. So mm -hmm. if someone has mm -hmm. dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, they would be unable, you know, they, they would also qualify for extended care. Uh, I consider that the trump card because if you have Alzheimer's or dementia, you probably can't perform two of the six activities of, of daily living. Mm. So that basically is what would qualify someone for extended care. But and I've seen, I've had, I've had, I know of some people that have Alzheimer's and, and I, if, they, if their son didn't tell me they had Alzheimer's, I wouldn't know. Right, but that is a medical determination oh, that is right. made by the, the person's physician. So it has to do with the ability to recall information oh, okay. uh, as well as to um, answer current event questions. Uh, they, they may be fully functioning in the environment in which they are familiar, mm -hmm. but if you take them out of their home, uh, they, they may become disoriented. Uh, sure. That's true. And so when you say, the, so it's two of the six is pretty easy to, to qualify then, because that's a lot of, if you, if you can't do those, those, those are pretty easy ones to do. Um, and then, so the average care is, I've heard two years, three years, I don't know. And then we're talking about national statistics, right? Right, right. On, on, on average, uh, the average stay of an individual in an extended care facility is somewhere between two and three years. Uh, females tend to spend a longer time frame in uh, extended care or a long-term care setting than, than males. And to some extent, Percy, what skews that number is those people afflicted with dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, they tend to live a very long time. Yeah. 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 So uh, I would say if, if you were to look at um, the average that two to three years, may be uh, a little bit high because of those people that live maybe 12, 12 years with dementia or Alzheimer's. Yeah, when I got involved in this, in this industry 11, 12 years ago, when I did my research, it was seven years life expectancy. Today, it's almost 10 years from what I've seen. With, with um, Alzheimer's yeah, or dementia, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, Michael and I both have been on the planning committees for the Alzheimer's state plan, and the plan has come out now. You can contact the Alzheimer's Association uh, we can you can look at our February March issue because we are the cover story will be about specifically about Alzheimer's, um, but uh, it, it's just something that I think we got to start seriously taking a look at. Um, there's a big push to get the people documented in Hawaii because they say 65 70 percent of people that have Alzheimer's is not documented, so there's a big push for that. But so Michael, maybe you can ask where do most people ha have the care? Is it at home? Absolutely, and in, in Hawaii. Uh 
85% of caregiving is happening at home. So it's involving family mostly mm -hmm. or, or some, some friends. That's the first line of defense. Yeah. And the problem today is uh, it's not like in the days of my parents where you got five to nine kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I only got two kids. Well, that's the reason why China just re re increased the amount of kids from one to two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got two kids, person's got one kid. Right. And, and, and as caregiving goes, person, I know that uh, uh, no such thing is fair or equal, right? Yeah. So oftentimes it falls on the, the primary caregiver is only one of the children. So it's very stressful, really difficult situation to handle. Uh, you want to do the best for the loved ones that you can but it's not easy. And I, I know firsthand because it happens in my house. Right. Well, for those of you that may have, uh, that follow us, Generations Magazine, you might want to try and f go back to our website, generations808.com, and look on the right side for the past issues. And I believe it was the June, July issue of this year. Uh, Mr. Yee, Michael Yee here was our cover um, for the sandwich generation. Generation, uh, Michael is a baby boomer, taking care of his children also taking care of his, uh, his uh, family, his parents. So it, it's a huge issue, Michael, as you, as you know, and you're very fortunate dealing with that family. It is such an emotional part. It is, it is really, you know, it can be physical because you have to, you know, have, may have to, you know, transfer or carry your, your loved one. But it's also, a, it's a social phenomenon that dealing with your brothers and sisters. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and that's why I say that uh, it can, bring some people together and for a lot of people it can it can bring people apart and so uh, a very serious thing that if if we can think and plan ahead we can increase the probability that we can keep families together by solving it and and not making our children mm -hmm. the primary caregivers uh, enabling them to function enabling them to have uh, uh, some semblance of their normal life because no matter how I slice it up, you got to give up something to be a caregiver. Yeah. We're here with Mr. Michael Yee, a certified financial planner with Ameriprise Financial here locally. And your group is called Naho'o Kelly. Naho'o Kelly. Naho'o Kelly in Hawaiian means navigators. And that's what we do is we help people navigate through their financial lives. That's right. Tony, you, you know, you're out of California, but you come to Hawaii quite a bit. Do you see any differences between the West Coast and the mainland versus Hawaii at all? Uh, I think the uh, demographic of the population here is a, a little bit older than in the Silicon Valley, which is, is where I live. You've got a lot of the up-and-coming millennials and, and younger there. But here I actually went to, the again, the Department of Health and Human Services to look at uh, their website in terms of the demographics here in Hawaii. And about 34% of the population is over the age of 50. Right. So to Michael's point, uh, this is a big concern for people on the islands here because they're either uh, in that generation, you know, maybe 70 plus, where it is imminent, or they are giving care, or they're in the generation right before that. Uh, and they're doing planning with uh, Michael's firm uh, and looking to the future about how they're going to address their long-term care situation, or they may be caring, uh, as Michael is right now, uh, for, for one of the older individuals. So uh, a significant component of the population is uh, looking to address uh, extended care concerns. It really is a big issue. Um, so Michael, so you deal with all ages really quickly. We're gonna take a short break, but when do you start the planning? When do you start talking about long-term care? I start bringing it up when they're in their 40s because what buys long-term care insurance, which is the best way to solve the problem, is age and health. So the younger you are, the more healthy you are, it's going to cost you less. You're going to use pennies to buy dollars that you're going to use in the future. You're going to make it affordable and uh, you'll be able to solve the problem in a sustainable and affordable way. Yeah, uh, just let you know, everybody, if you're listening, that uh, sometime in January, hopefully, we're going to see a public awareness campaign from the State Office on Aging talking about the, the cost, the high cost of long-term care, uh, the, uh, the risk of not planning for long-term care. Uh, do you really want your children to, pay, to take care of you in, in 
meet those long-term care needs. And actually, the state has a, has a website. You can go to ADR, Hawaii ADRC, and they have a whole bunch of um, uh, articles about the long-term care. But there's also a local group called FACE, uh, facehawaii.org, and they have they're one of the major concerns they are is about long-term care and they published recently on their website about the annual cost of levels of care so a lot of times i tell people the first level of care is adult day health uh, or adult day care and that's about seventeen thousand a year assisted living assisted living or like a retirement like a plaza or a a, um, arcadia or um, 15 craigside it's about forty eight thousand a year which is about four thousand a month then you have home care, which could be a little more than that because that's going to be uh, fifty-four to fifty-five thousand. Uh, and then we have the nursing facility, skilled care, which is on average about ten to twelve thousand a month here in Hawaii. So, guys, it's really it's really important to start thinking about this. Uh, we're going to take a short break here. We're here with Mr. Michael Yee and Tony Jamato from Ameriprise Financial. We'll be right back after this short break. Percy Ihara from Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296-5467. That's 296-5467. This is Generations Radio on AM690, The Answer. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one -on -one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe Moon Physical Therapy. Moon Physical Therapy. We achieve results. Aloha. This is Martha Clopin. And Al Harrington. Choosing the right Medicare plan not only saves you money, it also helps you avoid headaches and heartaches down the road. We want to remind everyone to listen to a Medicare moment with Martha. Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as we help answer important questions on Medicare so you can stay healthy, wealthy, and wise all year long. Call me at 543-2073. 543-2073. I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ. And today, I'm building a powerful and promising future free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four and five night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from six ninety nine. Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide body seven sixty seven planes with complimentary in flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at five nine one forty seven seventy seven or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Hauer from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690, The Answer. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. 
Welcome back, everybody, to Generations Radio. I am Percy Yahara, your host and publisher and editor of Generations Magazine. And thanks to all, all of you who have been coming to our website and reading our magazine online and checking out all our other resources because you viewers to our website, average, Tony, get this, Tony's from the mainland, but he comes to Hawaii quite a bit, average viewer to our website, 13 to 17 pages. Goodness. That's that's huge. And uh what another big figure is that what's called a, for websites is called a bounce rate. How long people stay on your website? The higher the number, not so good. The lower the number, the better. But the very few websites below fifty or sixty, mm-hmm. we're below twenty. We're wow. at between thirteen and eighteen uh, percent. So we're doing very well and, and continue going there. We will always. We're actually revamping our website right now, making it more user friendly and uh, adding a few more things on there. So. Check it out. Probably by early 2016, it would be a little bit easier to navigate. Um, not that it's bad now, but we want to just make it be ahead of the times. And and thanks for all of you visiting our website. And as well as you know, we have over 150 locations to pick up a free copy of Generations Magazine. The best bet, I'll be honest with you, there is a library system. We're one of the few magazines that are distributed through the library system statewide, including the island of Lanai and Molokai. So, um, so the December issue just came out. And it should be circulating around the state and being distributed as we speak. And thanks to KTA on a big island, uh, their stories have the magazines. And get it, get it early because they will run out in about three weeks. And uh, it's hard to keep them replenishing that. So, But anyway, the cover is Father Bill, who's the uh, pastor over at uh, in Molokai at Kalapapa. And the unique factor about uh, thing about his story is that he wanted... At the, at the mid 30s, I believe, late 30s, he wanted to work for Mother Teresa. He wanted to find a way to give back, and he he sent her letters. He sent her a letter. So, well, maybe I'll send her a letter and put money in there. So she really contacted me back. He did all that. Nothing happened. So he said, "You know what? I'm just going to fly there, move to India, and find her and work with her." And he did that. He called up the, the parish that she was working at, and she answers the phone. He tells this story, and he says, "She goes." Come on down. <laughs> and so 25 years, he worked for Mother Teresa. Fantastic wow. story. Unfortunately, I was not able to go to the photo shoot and meet him in person when we did this, this, this story. But uh, what a great story. And eventually, he gravitated to and learned about Father Damien and, and Sister Marion Cope and got to Maui. And he's been there in Kalapapa now for, I think, six or seven years. So great, great story. One of my favorite ones. And, and uh, thanks to our photographer, Brian Suda, who took pictures down there. He carried all his equipment down there. And I don't know if he went on a mule or not, but some great pictures of Molokai, including our art director, Wilson Angel, who is actually from Molokai. His um, his uh, cousin there helped him get to, locate, get to the location, which you have to be invited to Kalapapa. You can't just go down there as a tourist. Um, and of course, our editor, Catherine Smith, who went along on the, for the journey, it was a great story. I did want to mention our new business partners in the magazine, Oahu's premier senior assisted living community, Kala Kala Gardens. And the newest uh, adult day center is Live Well at Ivale by Kahala Nui. And that's a great location right outside of downtown. So if you baby boomers out there working downtown, you might want to drop off your parents or your, your mother or father and then go to work, come back and pick them up. It's right outside of downtown. And then our uh, one of our newer partners is uh, Legal Shield, Peterson Rosario. And I did not know this, and Michael, maybe I don't know if you talked to Peterson yet, but the number one problem with seniors is identity theft. 60% of all identity theft is against seniors. Oh, yeah. And uh, their cost is lower than the other big name company that you see always advertising about identity uh, protection. But it's a great program. In fact, I was talking to somebody this morning coming here, and they were looking at getting a mortgage, but they had some credit problems. I said, well, what was the deal? Her identity that identity was taken last week. And the headaches she's been having to go through to get all that back, if her credit's really bad. She went from an 800 credit score to under 500. So they ran up a whole bill of credit. So I'm actually meeting with Peterson this afternoon to, to give her give him information to talk to this lady, how he can help out because the pr- process is very time consuming. Um, but so we have some great articles in our this December January issue. Uh, one of my favorites is about the four seniors, well, 60 plus guys that after life they decided they want to be deacons, and so they got ordained as deacons in here in Hawaii. So thanks to uh, John Haoli Tomoso. Um, and a few other new deacons there. There are most of them are Maui, one on Oahu. Um, 
But thanks to Leeward YAWCA and YMCA that offers a lot of programs for seniors. Uh, and our resource guide for this month is a listing of all the book clubs in the state of Hawaii. Well, not all of them, hopefully most of them. But book clubs is really growing. And uh, as you know, you seniors and baby boomers love to read. So um, join one of those book clubs. It's, it's, it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big reader. I like to do audio tapes and because I don't have a whole lot of time to read. But... Um, Great articles in this month, December, January issue of Generations Magazine. So thanks to Father Bill there. So anyway, we're here with Michael Yee, a certified financial planner with Ameriprise Financial. And your group is called Naho Kelly. And Mr. Right. Tony Jamato with uh, Ameriprise. And you're like their big boss out of California. And Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll say that here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Don't tell them that back on the mainline. I know, I know. But yeah, and you, and you come quite often. I'll yeah, tell you, I, I six do. Six times a year. Wow. Yeah, you got that, your own car is... and place already over here? I should. I should. You really uh, should. But, but if you want to get a chance, uh, call Michael up and we'll get Michael out. Well, Michael writes for the magazine, so you can contact him through there. But he, I didn't realize you did two workshops a month. That's great. Yeah. And, I, and I've been to them in pretty good places. You have it at right. 3660. You had it at the... Um, the above Nico's at um, the harbor over there. Right. And sometimes we have them in our buildings. So oh, we vary uh, location, topics. Uh, some of them are, are uh, fun events. Some are educational. And some of them are charitable causes. Yeah, I like that. And actually, you always serve good food, too. We but try. <laughs> you always have great speakers. And I yeah. highly recommend. In fact, I tell everybody, even all my clients and their kids, Everybody needs a financial advisor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea what percentage of people that have financial advisors, either one of you? It's not enough. I know that. <laughs> not enough. Yeah. And I think the benefit of having a financial advisor is the comprehensive, holistic financial planning uh, component that you opened up with, Percy. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, uh, money managers are, are just looking at returns and they're not really focused on uh, doing uh, long-term planning to enable the client to achieve their mm -hmm. uh, objectives. And I've been working with uh, Michael's firm for as long as I've been with the company, and that's one of the things that they focus on is, first of all, ascertaining the client's objectives. Uh, and once that is uh, solidified, uh, presenting them with a strategy to achieve those objectives. It really is important because, like I said, a lot of the many money managers, stockbrokers, that's all they care about returns and all they care about making them money. Um, but, Michael, you had mentioned earlier that, you know, if you don't plan for long-term care, that could be very catastrophic for the family, not only financially, but emotionally. And it breaks families up. It breaks families up. And, uh, I mean, how do you, how do you account for uh, uh, maybe you get a good return on investment, but these days when people are living 30 years, What's, what's enough money now? Remember, we talked about mm -hmm. that before. So sometimes if you don't know ahead of time what's enough money to get you 30 years, you might be, some people have to look at using the equity in their home so that they can get through their lifetime. And throw in the long-term care and throw in the possibility that it could cost you as much as 435000 for three years today. Three years, yeah. For today, uh, what's, what's that going to do to the family's retirement what's that going to do to the family's legacy so do not take a comprehensive holistic look at all of our financial needs over your lifetime as you go through there's no such thing as uh i call it the four phases of life is the go-go stage like how we are now mm -hmm. and then you're going to hit the slow go stage something happened and, and now you is the beginning of long-term care uh, lawyers call it uh, diminished capacity. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to hit the no-go stage. That's called incapacity. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then end of life is the last six months to one year of your life. So what if we just plan about the go-go stage, which is what I think uh, money managers think about is uh, how you're going to live your life, enjoy all of that. They forget about those other stages and, and, and what is it going to cost? What is it going to do to the family? Yeah. You got to do the whole thing. Well, the figures that we talked about today are today's figures. And we, I think we, many years ago, we, we had a conversation about what's that going to cost for us? Let's say we don't need care to our 85. That's 30 years from, from me, from now. What's that going to be 30 years from now? You think it's still going to be 8000 or 10000 a month? I don't think so. Right. And that's the scary part of it. But what, what alternatives do families have, Michael? Well, the alternative is do nothing and, and let it happen by chance. 
I, I'm very lucky and fortunate to say that uh, my average relationship with clients, since most of my clients are seniors, is more than 20 years. So if I can look back in the crystal ball and look back 20 years, my clients, many of them came to me when they first retired all the way to end of life. So even then, when you think about what a home costs 20 years ago and what it costs today and what the cost of care was 20, 30 years ago, I, I think we used to throw out a number, uh, $100 a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, and, and so guess what? How were you going to keep up with buying a long-term care policy way back when? And they did. And I can tell you we have happy endings and they're so happy. The family's happy that they took care of it with long-term care insurance. They invested pennies to buy dollars and yeah. transferred the risk from the family's retirement and legacy to the insurance company and took the burden off of their children. Yeah. Well, a lot of times people will say, Percy, you're, and Michael, you're right. The issue is what we see so many insurance companies getting out of the business. So maybe Tony, you can answer that. Why do you, why do you answer that when you say it's too expensive or will that company be around later on? Well, I think first of all, you want to deal with a company that has a good credit rating, uh, a high stock price, has been in the business a while, uh, and uh, also with whom the uh, insurance agent or advisor has a relationship uh, so that you're actually dealing with an individual who can work out any uh, unanticipated issues that may arise rather than just be uh, relegated to a 1-800 number mm -hmm. to, to solve your own problem. Yeah, it is so, it, it, it's, such a, it's, a, it's such a unique dynamic. People don't wanna buy insurance because they gotta pay for college, they gotta fix the house, they wanna go to Vegas. And I tell people, you know, you know, you know Hawaii, we can go to Vegas quite cheap. I mean, it's six ninety nine yes, yes, for yeah. four nights, five days, mm -hmm. airfare, hotel, three meals a day. I mean, you, you cannot beat that. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. but I always tell people, people spend more time planning that Las Vegas vacation than planning their long-term care needs. It, it is, it is unique because well, you can't get that package on the mainland. I mean, but it's just, we need to start thinking about this. So Michael, what kind of plans do people look at today? What are the plans? I know there's a standalone long-term care insurance and a big buzzword are all these hybrids. So right. either one of you, what do you can explain about the hybrids and why would somebody would choose a hybrid versus a standalone long-term care insurance policy? That's a great question. <clears throat> Uh, you want to answer that? You want me to answer? <laughs> All right, uh, I'll, I'll give a I'll give a try on that. You know, I think the demographics that are occurring right here in Hawaii are also reflected in some of the states on the mainland. So if you think of Florida, Arizona, some of the states in the Northeast, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, they also have an aging population, and so the federal government is aware that the baby boomers, as they go through the stages that Michael described are probably going to need some sort of assistance as they get older. They're probably going to need a hand uh, to maintain their, their lifestyle. So back in 2006, uh, Congress uh, passed a law as part of the Pension Protection Act that introduced a new product uh, to balance out the, the, the long-term care option. And that is uh, this hybrid life insurance long-term care product. Mm. So basically this product provides the individual with a death benefit as long life insurance does, but the individual could also accelerate their life insurance death benefit income tax-free to pay for extended care costs. And so the government, the federal government has expanded the use of life insurance to address not only end of life issues, but also those uh, cost expenses that may occur prior to that. These policies also have cash value in them, mm -hmm. many of them. So for individuals that are perhaps age 50 and might be concerned about paying long-term care premiums for 10, 20, 30 years uh, and not having access to the premiums that they put into the long-term care product, uh, this hybrid solution could enable someone, you know, after 10 years, let's say they buy the policy at age 50, maybe they need some of the money because uh, they're putting on solar panels, uh, mm -hmm. one of their children is going through a divorce or, you know, something of that nature. 
Uh, so it, it really has a threefold benefit. Hmm. And is the cost more expensive to get, obtain these kind of hybrid plans? Actually, they're commensurate. Uh, back to Michael's representation about uh, what what drives the cost of policies, there's really three things. Uh, number one is, uh, what is the pool of money that is available? How, how much coverage would you like? The face amount of the policy for a life insurance contract, maybe for a long-term care contract, how many years do you anticipate covering? Uh, number two would be the policy type. Uh, so for example, with long-term care, you can get a discount if you're going in as couples. Uh, hmm. Uh, for if you if you want a hybrid product and you want cash value access, uh, that may drive the price. Uh, and the third thing that would determine the cost would be the benefits uh, provided under the contract. So, uh, what is the um, elimination period? Which you know is it 30 days, 60 days, 90 days before the benefit cut kicks in? Is there an inflation protection? Uh, are you right. looking to you have to have that, don't you? Have have the policy grow over time, or or maybe you have one of the really robust features such as respite care, where respite care. you know if you have a caregiver, uh, like a spouse or a child, you can actually uh, add a respite care provision where um, that person could actually leave, get the groceries, you know, get their hair cut, uh, and and the policy would pay for someone to come in. Uh, to replace that primary caregiver. So it's really, you know, the pool of money, uh, the policy type, and uh, the features uh, and benefits of that contract that drive the price. So when you you have a life insurance policy that has a long-term care rider or a benefit where when you don't, you, you can't do two of the six ADLs, it, that kicks in? That's right, yeah. that's right. It's, yeah. it's a determination under both contracts that is made by the individuals healthcare provider and then confirmed by the insurance company. And that's twofold uh, to, to number one, avoid fraud mm -hmm. uh, on the insurance company, but also to protect uh, the insured so that, you know, a caregiver is actually a bona fide person that is there mm -hmm. and qualified to give that care. Yeah. So do you have to, you have to qualify medically, right? You have to still need to do a physical or some kind of a blood test or something? Right. In order to get any life insurance contract, uh, back to a point Michael made previously, you, you buy it with your wealth, your, your income and assets, mm -hmm. but also with your health. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important to buy the insurance uh, when you're in good health, that lowers the cost uh, as well as when you are younger. Yeah, it's, um, it's so important because people can't start thinking about long-term care at 75. Well, they could. I think you can get long-term care insurance up to what, 77, 78 around there? 75 is the cutoff now. Now? They keep oh. dropping it. Yeah, because my mother-in-law got younger. it at, I, I believe, at uh, yeah. uh, 78, 79. My yeah. father yeah, got it used to it be at 79 75. at one time. Oh. And used to be 83 at another time. Really? Yeah. Wow, 75. Yeah. I, wow. I like to say <laughs> that... Um, uh, the traditional long, something is better than nothing. So traditional long-term care is pays for long-term care only. So because it only pays for long-term care only, you're kind of using it or you're not <clears throat> using it, right? And and so you you get it cheaper, but it only pays when you when it happens. Some people like the hybrids that have developed and find it attractive because what they want is certainty and they want flexibility. Right. So. When I say the hybrid uh, is attractive to some people, they're willing to give up some of the leverage. You still have leverage in life insurance in exchange for, uh, oh, I buy this policy so I get this bucket. If I need it, I can use it for long-term care. Mm. Oh, what if long-term care doesn't happen? If it doesn't happen, the same bucket can go as life insurance tax-free to your family. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's life insurance. What if I change my mind and I say, ah, ah baloney in that long-term care, baloney in the life. I, I hate my kids. I want to spend my money. Give me my money back. <laughs> now you got cash values. So you have certainty that you're going to get one of the three mm -hmm. flexibility in how you use it. And, and they're willing to give up some of the leverage so if i explain leverage in terms of paying premiums over time traditional long-term care maybe you're paying over 25 years 20 cents for one dollar 
and then you go life insurance maybe you're paying 35 cents for one dollar so you're giving up a little bit of the leverage mm -hmm. in exchange for certainty death benefit long-term care and access to the cash values yeah it's so important so guys we're here at michael yee from ameriprise financial a certified financial advisor and planner and tony Jamato from uh california but he comes to hawaii quite a bit i mean you, even your your lower sure looks a little faded a little bit tony so you must have had about <laughs> I, a long time ago i know no, you've been here many times no, no. made <laughs> but, uh, several trips back and forth yes. you know one yeah. of the there was a recently a study done and i heard about it that the study found that you know medic medicare doesn't pay for medic long-term care and a lot of people didn't know that medicaid doesn't pay for in-home care right so kind of explain that to our audience out there, Mike. So, so Medicare mm -hmm. is designed for what uh, Tony was describing. So it'll pay up to skilled care. And, and usually if, if you land in the hospital uh, and then you need to re, uh, physical therapy, that's the part that they pay. Yeah, the acute part, and it's like up to 100 days or something like that, right? Yeah, so right. it's maximum 100 days. So in fact, it's so it, it doesn't pay for most of the long-term care we're talking about. Oh, absolutely. That Social Security on their statement says, look at page four, it says long Medicare doesn't pay for long-term care. So when you go to our other government program that's called Medicaid, and Medicaid is a needs-based program, it's our safety net, it's for people without money. The poor. Right, so you're gonna get care. We're not gonna put you on the street, but the, what I, the primary thing I want people to focus on is exactly what we said is, Medicaid means you're gonna go to a facility. And I said that the majority of people are receiving care at home and wanna be at home, but you're gonna go to a facility. The second place, most important thing to understand about Medicaid is you give up control, you yeah. give up choice. You're not choosing where you're going. They're telling you where you're going. So. People who plan can say how and when and where, who they want the care yeah. to come from. Whoever's paying for it. Exactly. So so the way life works is uh, people with money have more choices than people without money. Yeah, well, I see in Hawaii, you, you can see in a paper almost every day, uh, some attorney talking about how to get your nursing home costs paid by the state. And people need to be very careful what that these attorneys are doing. And I'm actually have talked to some of politicians about they should not allow that verbiage in the paper and advertise. It's it's a lure, and yes, it is very expensive, yeah. and maybe not be a may be a way for your family to do it. However, I've run into several people that did not know that Medicaid does not pay for care in the home. I was with several uh, in the last five years, probably about ten families, and they said, "Oh, we're doing Medicaid planning." He said, and typically what they do, as you know, they put it in an irrevocable trust. But on an irrevocable trust, you, you cannot lend on it. You can't do a reverse mortgage or a regular mortgage or a line of credit. Um, and it's very hard to unravel. It is possible, but rarely do we ever see it unravel because a lot of times attorneys won't do it. And you're going to need to sign off from all the beneficiaries. But a lot of people don't realize that you can't stay in the home. Yeah, yeah. And they, they don't realize also that you lose the, the option of choice. Yeah. And that's a huge one because that's the person you love the most. Well, you know, they think about it now, and but 10 years from now, 20 years from now, right now, I think right now we're about 98% full. In five years, we'll be full. In 10 years, we'll be a waiting list down around the corner. So people got to be really be very, very careful. So uh, Tony, we'll start off with you. Any last parting words? We got a couple minutes left to go. What would you talk about? What would you say to people out there listening about long-term care? Well, I think that uh, there are many solutions available to people. Uh, there's pure long-term care, there's these hybrid products, there's annuities with riders, uh, there's the government, there's family, and what is really important is that to work with a financial advisor like Michael because each individual's plan will be unique. Uh, their circumstances are different, their net worth, and to work with somebody that looks at the matter holistically to provide all of the options that are available to, to, to that That's person the and the family. That's the key. Michael, uh, first of all, your phone number, how did they get a hold of you? It's 952-1240. Uh, and you're in a magazine as well, but yeah. we have one minute. My parting words are uh, the quality of the advice you get is everything, right? I can get advice from my son, I can get advice from my mother-in-law, but at the end of the day, I like to get my advice knowing that at least they have a grounded, education base 
plus experience that they're working from. So Percy, you've talked about it many times on radio about the importance of working with somebody that has a CFP designation. Uh, if you're looking at uh, long-term care, which a lot of people don't know enough to educate and talk to their uh, people about it, then uh, recently uh, Tony and I went to Las Vegas and got what is called CLTC, uh, Certified Long-Term Care Training, uh, so that we understand that aging topic and how to solve it. it. Absolutely. It is so huge of a decision. But my big thing, to, Mike, we got to be proactive. Exactly. We can't be reactive. We got to plan it out ahead. So again, the phone number again, Michael, sorry. 952-1240. Great. Thank you. Tony, good to see you again. Hope to see you back next year, early next year. Next time we gotta go have a dinner or a nice plate lunch someplace. Will but do, Percy. Anyway, Thank thanks a lot. Thanks to our engineer today, Chad. Appreciate it stepping in here. I am Percy Yihara as well. Always live well and enjoy the holidays. Aloha.